Differing literary and colloquial readings for certain Chinese characters are a common feature of many Chinese varieties, and the reading distinctions for these linguistic doublets often typify a dialect group. Literary readings, wendu wendu, are usually used in formal loan words or names, when reading aloud, and in formal settings, while colloquial readings, baidu baidu, are usually used in everyday vernacular speech. For example, in Mandarin the character for the word white Bai is generally pronounced Bai Pai, but as a name or in certain formal or historical settings it can be pronounced Bo Quo. This example is particularly well known due to its effect on the modern pronunciation of the names of the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907 poets Bai Juyi and Li Bai, alternatively Bo Juyi and Li Bo. Generally speaking, colloquial readings preserve more ancient and conservative pronunciations, while literary readings represent newer pronunciations influenced by the dialects of historical capital areas such as Nanjing or Beijing. The case is reversed in Mandarin Chinese, however, where literary pronunciations are usually older. Characteristics for a given Chinese variety, colloquial readings typically reflect native phonology, while literary readings typically originate from other Chinese varieties, typically more prestigious varieties. Colloquial readings are usually older, resembling the sound systems described by old rhyme dictionaries such as Guangyun. Literary readings are closer to the phonology of newer sound systems. Many literary readings are the result of Mandarin influence in Ming and Qing. Literary readings are usually used in formal settings because past prestigious varieties were usually used in formal education and discourse. Although the phonology of the Chinese variety in which this occurred did not entirely match that of the prestige variety when in formal settings, they tended to evolve toward the prestige variety. Also, neologisms usually use the pronunciation of prestigious varieties. Colloquial readings are usually used in informal settings because their usage in formal settings has been supplanted by the readings of the prestige varieties. Because of this, the frequency of literary readings in a Chinese variety reflects its history and status. For example, before the promotion of modern standard Chinese Mandarin, the dialects of the Central Plains had few literary readings, but they now have literary readings that resemble the phonology of modern standard Chinese. Outside the Central Plains, the relatively influential Beijing and Canton dialects have fewer literary readings than other varieties. In some Chinese varieties, there may be many instances of foreign readings replacing native readings, forming many sets of literary and colloquial readings. A newer literary reading may replace an older literary reading, and the older literary reading may become disused or become a new colloquial reading. Sometimes literary and colloquial readings of the same character have different meanings. The analogous phenomenon exists to a much more significant degree in Japanese, where individual characters kanji generally have two common readings, the newer borrowed, more formal on yomi, and the older native, more colloquial kun. Yomi. Unlike in Chinese varieties, which are genetically related, in Japanese the borrowed readings are unrelated to the native readings. Further, many kanji in fact have several borrowed readings, reflecting borrowings at different periods. These multiple borrowings are generally doublets or triplets, sometimes quite distant. These readings are generally used in particular contexts, such as older readings for Buddhist terms, which were early borrowings. Behavior in Chinese Cantonese in Cantonese, colloquial readings tend to resemble Middle Chinese, while literary readings tend to resemble Mandarin. The meaning of a character is often differentiated depending on whether it is read with a colloquial or literary reading. There are regular relationships between the nuclei of literary and colloquial readings in Cantonese. Colloquial readings with t nuclei correspond with literary t and i nuclei. It is also the case with colloquial a and literary p and colloquial i and literary i. Of course, not all colloquial readings with a certain nucleus correspond to literary readings with another nucleus. Examples Hakka Hakka contains instances of differing literary and colloquial readings. Examples Mandarin 
Unlike most varieties of Chinese, literary readings in the national language are usually more conservative than colloquial readings. This is because they reflect readings from before Beijing was the capital, e.g. from the Ming dynasty. Most instances where there are different literary and colloquial readings occur with characters that have entering tones. Among those are primarily literary readings that have not been adopted into the Beijing dialect before the Yuan dynasty. Colloquial readings of other regions have also been adopted into the Beijing dialect, a major difference being that literary readings are usually adopted with the colloquial readings. Some differences between the Taiwanese Guoyu and mainland Chinese Patonghua are due to one standard adopting a colloquial reading for a character while another standard adopts a literary reading. Examples of literary readings adopted into the Beijing dialect Examples of colloquial readings adopted into the Beijing dialect Sichuanese in Sichuanese, colloquial readings tend to resemble Ba Shu Chinese, Middle Sichuanese, or Southern Proto-Mandarin in Ming Dynasty, while literary readings tend to resemble modern standard Mandarin. For example, in Yaoling dialect, the colloquial reading of Wu means things is B, which is very similar to its pronunciation of Ba Shu Chinese in Song Dynasty, 960-1279. Meanwhile, its literary reading, Bo, is relatively similar to the standard Mandarin pronunciation, Yu. The table below shows some Chinese characters with both literary and colloquial readings in Sichuanese. Wu In the northern Wu-speaking region, the main sources of literary readings are the Beijing and Nanjing dialects during the Ming and Qing dynasties, and modern standard Chinese. In the southern Wu-speaking region, literary readings tend to be adopted from the Hangzhou dialect. Colloquial readings tend to reflect an older sound system, not all Wu dialects behave the same way. Some have more instances of discrepancies between literary and colloquial readings than others. For example, the character Wei had a initial in Middle Chinese, and in literary readings, there is a null initial. In colloquial readings it is pronounced, Yu, in Songjing. About 100 years ago, it was pronounced Yu in Suzhou and Shanghai, and now it is Yu. Some pairs of literary and colloquial readings are interchangeable in all cases, such as in the words Wu Song and Song Zhang. Some must be read in one particular reading. For example, Ren Min must be read using the literary reading, Zimi, and Ren Ming must be read using the colloquial reading, Imi. Some differences in reading for the same characters have different meanings, such as ba jie, using the colloquial reading, point, means, make great effort, and using the literary reading, point, means, get a desired outcome. Some colloquial readings are almost never used, such as, for wu and, t, for zhang. Examples Min nan Min languages, such as Taiwanese Hokkien, separate reading pronunciations do yin from spoken pronunciations yu yin and explications. Jia. Hokkien dictionaries in Taiwan often differentiate between such character readings with prefixes for literary readings and colloquial readings when and by, respectively. The following examples in Pei, Hog show differences in character readings in Taiwanese Hokkien. In addition, some characters have multiple and unrelated pronunciations, adapted to represent Hokkien words. For example, the Hokkien word ba meat", is often written with the character ru, which has etymologically unrelated colloquial and literary readings he, k and geo, k, respectively. For more explanation, see literary and colloquial readings in Hokkien. Gone. The following are examples of variations between literary and colloquial readings of Chinese characters in Gan Chinese. See also Anyomi Reconstructions of Old Chinese, for a more detailed study on historical Chinese pronunciation Sino-Vietnamese vocabulary hashtag monosyllabic loanwords sino xenic pronunciations References <references>